Hello and welcome to JTC Sport. Isn't this great? The sun is out and I'm in a cupboard doing YouTube videos. Considering I'm going to be doing a World Cup video every single day of the World Cup, I, I'm i sorry but I hope it rains this summer, lads. I hope it f***ing pours. Anyway, that's enough on my depressing summer. Anyway, today we're looking at the biggest mistakes that have ever happened. And no, I'm not talking about my conception. Let's take a look at the errors that Premier League clubs have individually made this season. Arsenal. Not sacking Arsene Wenger. Where do we start with Arsenal mistakes? Not having Ty's water bottle chucked into the River Thames would be a start. He is a 40 year old man who looks like the club shop threw up on him. Not troops though, no I wouldn't say a bad word against him. I'm afraid he'd batter me. Where did Arsenal go wrong? Right, not having the balls to say to Arsene Wenger, f*** off, there's the door. Well actually you didn't get us into the Champions League. Not particularly looking forward to the trips into the back arse of nowhere. To play a bunch of Vikings and Ikea salesmen. Maybe do what every other club on planet earth does fire the manager I have to hand it to Baker. like in what other company could you underperform to such a level and still decide well no actually I'll, I'll, I'll just give myself another contract this guy could waltz into the arsenal boardroom smash up a computer take a dump on the table give a 20 minute powerpoint presentation on why they should bring back Yaya Sonogo and he'd still keep his job Wenger needs to go but Jesus they, that board needs to grow some bollocks. Bournemouth, signing Jermaine Defoe. In a way you couldn't really blame Bournemouth for opening the wallet onto Jermaine Defoe's face last summer. He just smashed 15 goals for Sunderland. Fast forward a year and the only thing getting smashed in Sunderland is Darren Gibson. This time around Defoe has been injured and when he's not been injured he's looked old. Four goals for Defoe, that £120,000 a week could have been better spent elsewhere. Brighton, they're away for him. Probably for Brighton it was Chris Hewton failing to realise that he'd have a lot less stress if he actually managed to coach his players to win a few games on the road, they've only won two away from home. You'd swear their team was packed full of genie vinylums. Burnley, their 12 game winless run. It's been a great season for Burnley. You will probably think I'm insane, but this season has been a slight missed opportunity maybe. Hear me out before you cart me off to the nearest insane asylum. The Clarets went on an 11 match winless run over Christmas. Yes, they're playing top opposition, but have they got maximum points from the games against Crystal Palace, Swansea, Brighton, Huddersfield, Newcastle, and Southampton, they'd be four points off Champions League with a game in hand. I'm reaching, aren't I? Chelsea getting rid of Diego Costa. It doesn't take a genius to work out where Chelsea have gone wrong this season. Yeah, you could point to the nonsensical transfers, Ross Barkley and Danny Drinkwater. Really? But I'm gonna go for Antonio Conte kicking Diego Costa back to Spain. Stemming back to when he dumped the Spaniard, who is really Brazilian, you can't fool me, by text. Yes, this man looks like he skins hamsters with his bare teeth, just for the crack, but 20 league goals last season. 52 in 89 games overall, it's very impressive. Why are you exiling him to Spain? And it's not as if Alvaro Morata worked out well, is it? Crystal Palace. Sam Allardyce. What was Palace's mistake? Not calling bullshit on Big Sam's retirement was one. Oh, oh you want to go out for retire and live with the wife? Is it bullshit? Just bullshit. Travel the world, eat some croissants in Paris. Bullshit. We all knew within six months he'd be accepting a fat paycheck from another club terrified for their lives and dialing his number like he was the fire brigade. Palace should have just read between the lines. Give him more money and he will stay at the club. And you could have just avoided Frank the Boar and Hedwig the Owl. They could also have done with a living, breathing centre forward with working limbs, considering Kusha Benteke is worth three shades of wank. Everton signing a million number tens. What have Everton done right this season? Like seriously. The fact that they're having to send off a survey to fans to rate their manager probably gives a good indicator that nobody at that club has a f clue what they're doing. Signing a bunch of number tens last summer wasn't. A wise move. Gilfie Sigurdsson, Wayne Rooney and Davy Klassen all arrived at the same time. Why? It's like letting a four year old do your shopping. You just come back with a bunch of Mars bars. Huddersfield Town, absolutely nothing. Okay, Tom Ince. Huddersfield Town have done absolutely nothing wrong. They have played this season to an absolute T so far. LA. I wouldn't have signed Paul Ince's son. Maybe, maybe, maybe that one. I wouldn't even trust him to mow my lawn. Leicester City not selling Mares in January. Somebody tell me what Leicester City been playing for since January. Well, I've, I've, I've got time. Believe me, I've, I've got time. Like, they were already safe. Champions League football, not a, not a chance. You sign Real Mares for £400,000. 
He gets you promoted, he wins you the league, Man City offers 60 million pounds for him, and you say no, we're basically gonna keep you chained to the bathtub, you can never leave Leicester City. Look, I get that he signed a four year contract, right? It looks very stupid now, but Leicester, this didn't come out of the blue. Mahrez told you last summer he wanted to leave. He's going to leave you this summer, and for a significantly lesser fee as well. Oh, and since January you've won two league games out of nine, and uh, you've been dumped out of the FA Cup, so, like, what was the point? You should have just, you should have just sold him. Liverpool not buying Van Dijk sooner. Listen, Liverpool have got their man now, but Christ above, this transfer wasn't half embarrassing. Not because the Dutchman is the tenth most expensive player of all time, or because Liverpool clearly haven't found anywhere else to shop, but because last June they had to publicly apologise to Southampton for sniffing around their player. With Southampton threatening legal action, oh no, not the Premier League police, after allegedly tapping him up, Liverpool sent a grovelling apology, and Van Dijk went and sulked in his car for about six months. They they should have just signed him last summer. Man City, resting players in the derby. This was a chance to win the league title at home. Against your biggest rivals who basically been top dogs in the city for years. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Pep, whatever you do, do not drop players for this one. Do not drop them. That's exactly what he did. Did not pay off. 2-0 up and with Raheem Sterling playing like he had shoes on the wrong feet. United came back and prevented what would have been a glorious and historic moment. City. Instead, uh, City had to just settle for celebrating the title in, in a pub. Man United losing to West Brom. Handing the title to City this way is like acing an English exam one week and then getting disqualified because you misspelled your f***ing name. United produced a heroic performance at the Etihad to prolong City's wait for the title. One week later, all that good work was flushed down the toilet. And Paul Pogba was back to looking like the second coming of Ali Dia. Newcastle, not selling the club. When is Newcastle going to be free of Mike Ashley? Seriously, it's been 11 years. I'll bet Rafa Benitez was sitting in his house praying to Christ that the Amanda Stabley deal went through, just so he wouldn't have to keep buying fifth choice strikers from Stoke. Cause lads, if he's behind a striker in the pecking order that hasn't scored in two years, you know he probably has the technical ability of a coked up badger. Southampton sacking Claude Puel. The sacking of Claude Puel for finishing eighth and reaching a cup final. <laughs> I mean, fair play, Southampton might reach a cup final this season, not Likely, but you've also dropped 10 places in the league, so uh, yeah, I think you might have. Uh, I think you might have that one up, alright. Stoke City, Paul Lambert. Is there a more desperate decision in football than hiring Paul Lambert? Probably Netflix commissioning a documentary about Sunderland. Jack Rodwell and Chill, really? Look, I get Mark Hughes' time was up at the club, but why Paul Lambert? Why? He's won one game since he's been. A dreadful appointment. Swansea City, Renato Sanchez. Renato Sanchez. Lads, when Swansea signed him, they probably had to touch him to make sure he was real. That's Adam Johnson's excuse and he's sticking to it. A Golden Boy winner in the same team as Sam Klukas. That's like going out for dinner and your dessert options being apple crumble or fermented squirrel piss. But no, all that, all that turned, to, turned to shit pretty much immediately. Signing Sanchez, one of the world's most coveted youngsters on loan from Bayern Munich. It was a bit like matching with a stunning girl on Tinder. Like, she looks great, everything. You know, perfect. But then when you meet her, she looks like your Uncle Tony who sweats when he speaks. It must have been so demoralizing for the entire squad to see this superstar look about as useful as an expired yogurt in the middle of the park. Tottenham, appealing Harry Kane's goal. Uh, yeah, the uh, appealing Christian Eriksen's goal is pretty high up the list, I would say. I swear on my daughter's life that I touched the ball. Jesus Christ, Harry Kane seems like the type of guy that sacrifices his next born child for a golden boot. Look, if Kane says the rim of the ball grazed his sleeve, I believe him. I mean, if that was a bullet, he'd barely have felt a pinch and they'd have laughed him out of A&E. Now don't be surprised if Spurs season just Kyle Walker peters out. With all the players no longer acting like a team, but more like a factory for Harry Kane. Predictably just passing to him all the time, terrified that if they don't then he'll turn up at their house late at night wearing nothing but a hockey mask. Just watch them now, see if their season peters out. Just, just watch. Watford sacking Marco Silva. Watford just just being Watford, really. Stacking managers, like, like it's not even a joke anymore. We all know that club are like the player of the Premier League. Terrified of commitments and sending managers packing before they even have time to rob your hoodie. But like, I get why they got rid of Walter Mazzari, that I couldn't even speak English. But why you resist advances from Everton, who offered 10 million pounds for Marco Silva in November, only to dump him six weeks later anyway. Like, I wouldn't bother learning Javi Garcia's name, lads. I have a yogurt in my fridge that's probably gonna outlast that man. Then again, it does smell like a dead hamster. West Brom, Alan Pardew. Pardew, Alan Pardew. Okay, look, I get that West Brom wants to get rid of Tony Pulis. Of course, 
I get that. Nobody wants to watch that football for the rest of their lives. But there was a way to remove Pulis, all right? He's like a carefully placed cyst. You can't just yank it out with all your might halfway through the season. He has to be carefully eradicated from the system. Stoke City are a fine blueprint with Mark, well, Actually, Mark Hughes might not be the best example, considering he's going to get two teams relegated. But anyway, when Stoke City wanted Pudis gone in 2013, they didn't just get rid of him halfway through the season, they waited until the end. So then Mark Hughes had a whole summer of transition. The squad could learn how to play under Hughes. They didn't just sack Pudis in November and throw the managerial grenade that is Alan Pardew at the players. West Ham, not taking the fans seriously. I know this didn't happen this season, but I'm including this anyway because it's having a direct impact on the fans to this day. Moving the club from Upton Park into the soulless goldfish bowl that is the London Stadium doesn't look very clever now, does it? Not when you have fans trying to rush your club captain and impaling the turf for the f corner flag. Anyway, that's the end of the video, lads. Cheers for watching. That was just a bit of a ramble, really. Now, can I go enjoy the Sunday? It's gone now, anyway. F English weather. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like, a share, and a subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.